flat charger is the basic framework of the sniping weapons in the game. Unlike shooter type weapons, holding the fire button will charge your shot, increasing both range and damage, and releasing the button will release the ink. At full power, you will always splat someone in one hit. Much like others before it, the splat charger comes in vanilla format, as well as the kelp variant. Both of these also come with scoped variants as well. There is also the Hero Charger replica that can be unlocked through the Girl Inkling amiibo, but note that it is just a fancy looking splat charger. If you plan on using this weapon, getting used to its full range is very important. You can fire over 5 full shots with the ink tank, but you'll also need to practice shooting accurately to make the best out of it. Because unlike shooters and rollers, there is no leeway when it comes to hitting your target. You either hit them or don't. The damage the splat charger deals when you fire an uncharged shot is 40, much like the E leader. Given that, you can always expect to splat someone in 3 hits minimum if your foe is right in your face. However, with damage up equipment, you can increase the damage dealt with uncharged shots to over 50 per hit, allowing you to splat in only 2 hits. Not only that, but this will also allow you to splat without having to fully charge your shot as well. With 3 main damage up equipped, a 75% charge should be roughly enough to splat in a single hit. Keep in mind though that enemies with defensive equipment mitigate this advantage. In fact, with at least 2 pieces of main defense up, you'll always only splat them in 3 uncharged hits, and always need a full charge for a 1 hit kill. Finding the right amount of damage ups for your playstyle is crucial to winning battles for you and your team. Another crucial aspect of these weapons is the effectiveness of their range for the current mass and rotation. Unlike the scoped E leaders, I actually highly recommend trying the scoped splat charges when you're comfortable enough with the basic variants, because the small increase in range makes it so that they hit nearly as far as an E leader. The difference is particularly noticeable in more towers. The increased range allows you to hit opponents on the other side much more easily. Moving on to the splat charger's sub weapon, the splat bomb is a grenade which explodes faster the quicker it lands and stays on the ground. Damage wise, it is very similar to the suction bomb, though it feels as though it might have a little less reach comparatively. You can only throw one of these at a time because of how much ink they consume, so you'll probably want to use these to flush out opponents from hiding, or to trap them as they try to move into your position. If you're super jumping to your doom, you can also throw one out in the hopes that you'll splat something. The special of the splat chargers is bomb rush, which allows you to throw as many of the splat bombs as you want for roughly 6 seconds. When activating this, there is a small animation that your inkling will be forced into for half a second, so mind when you use it. Most players seem to use this for inking turf, which isn't a bad idea for some locations, but you'll probably also want to use them in combat as well. But there are important things to remember when activating this. For one, you can still use your main weapon. Two, throw a bomb at your feet occasionally to keep opponents from rushing to your face, and perhaps most importantly, don't forget that the bombs can slide on the ground and explode only when they've landed on it. Some locations just aren't suited for the special. All of these strengths and weaknesses make the Splat Charger a rather difficult weapon to master, so don't be dismayed if you're doing poorly the first time you use it. It's also not a weapon that is as good for Turf War as the Splattershot and Splat Roller are, but its variant, the Kilt Splat Charger, might be. It shares the same attributes as the basic version when it comes to the main attacks, but instead of Splat Bombs and Bomb Rush, it has the Sprinkler and Killer Whale. The Sprinkler is a particularly good sub for Turf War because you can throw it to ink over an isolated location while heading towards the action. You can also use it to distract opponents, or like a Pseudo Shield. On rare occasions, you might even splat a foe with it, though it's not recommended that you rely on it for that. The special Killer Whale is a bit redundant for a charger given that you're already attacking from a distance, but it can still be used very efficiently on some maps like Camp Triggerfish and Port Mackerel. On a more universal level, use it to trap or distract your opponents. Just don't activate it in the middle of the fight, as it leaves you completely open. Ultimately, the Splat Chargers are defensive weapons, meant to support a team with an advantage. They are difficult to master, but very effective when used to their full potential. Keep practicing with them and remember that you can use your range for more than just hitting foes with. Hit ahead of their route to trap them in your ink first, it might make it easier for you to splat them. If you want more tips and splatting matches, check the playlist in the description below. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and all have a very nice day.